Hello guys. In this video I'm going to be building this Panzer IV ammunition carrier by making some modifications to this Panzer IV H kit from Academy. So this release of the kit is originally from 1994 but the parts are from the 1980s at least and possibly even older than that. So one thing I should make clear is that this kit is not up to Academy's modern standards. Their modern kits are much better than this. The instructions are fairly clear basic line drawings and they will have us complete the model in seven steps. If we look at the sprues, they're not too bad. The side skirts are plastic and therefore they're obviously thicker than any, any photo etch parts would be. Some parts like the inside of these skirts here do have quite large ejectifin marks. I wanted to try something different with this video as well. So I recorded the majority of the build sequence as a hyperlapse on my phone. This isn't perfect as it is quite a long way away from the camera and you can't see a great amount of detail, but it does have the advantage of packing in quite a lot of the build sequence into a short amount of time. This is just an experiment guys, so do feel free to tell me whether you liked it, hated it, or something in between in the comments below. But I'm going to leave you with the hyperlapse sequence now and I'm going to come back at the end of the sequence and tell you about some of the modifications which I made. And here we have the built kit. I didn't show the majority of the turret armour on the hyperlapse because it was quite fiddly to do and my hands were basically blocking the camera the entire time. The kit looks okay but on closer inspection there are quite a few gaps in the turret. But the armour on the turret doesn't 
quite look the way I want it to look. It was quite hard to get it lined up. There's still a few gaps in it. Uh, the turret basket, I had to make some modifications to make that fit because it wanted to stick further back uh, away from the turret. So overall, it's the turret which made me consider other options for this kit. So after a bit of research, I came up with this reference image. This is a Panzer IV which has been converted to an ammunition carrier. I know it's not a H variant, it's an early variant, but basically the turret has been removed and replaced with a round wooden uh, cover over the, uh, the turret ring. So I thought this could be a slightly unusual but fairly easy modification to make. And I also thought that perhaps I could keep that turret for something else. Um, I know that certain um, turrets were used in fixed positions by the Germans during World War II, so I could do some research perhaps and find out if any of those had Panzer IV turrets on top and perhaps use it in a small diorama or something like that. So it won't get wasted. In order to make the wooden hatch, I took a sheet of styrene and I used my circle cutter. I measured the diameter of the turret ring and I set my circle cutter to the appropriate radius and used it to mark a circle into that sheet of styrene. And rather than trying to cut through the styrene all in one go, I went around and around and around the circle, gradually pushing through until the circle could easily pop out. And then a small piece of sanding was acquired, just for a slightly rough edge. And then when that circle was complete, I used some thin strips of styrene over the top to simulate the wooden planks that would make the hatch up. And when they were cut to shape and sanded, I scored across the middle to indicate that half of that hatch could lift up. And I sanded with a very rough grit sandpaper, I think it was uh, 200 grit, to try to make a wooden texture on those styrene strips. Then I found a few pieces from the spare parts box. So I don't know if these were supposed to be hinges, but they look like it here. A couple of grab handles from some tanks. And hopefully that looks quite close to the uh, reference image. In fitting with the kind of um, ad hoc uh, field created uh, feeling of this ammunition carrier, I decided to make a small metal rack on the back of the deck there for carrying ammunition or fuel drums or similar. I used some brass rod to do this and I glued it together with super glue. One thing I find helpful here is when you glue these items with super glue to put them on some sort of light tracing paper. This is the paper that often comes with deco sheets. The flat surface gives the metal somewhere to dry in place, but the paper is easy enough to pry off afterwards, it doesn't really stick to the super glue. And the whole kit was given a coat of Tamiya Grey Primer, then a coat of a dark grey colour, and then a coat of Tamiya's new Dark Yellow 2, which is XF88, and which is slightly lighter than their normal XF60 Dark Yellow colour. And the wooden panel was given a shadow coat of dark grey and then a light coat of wooden deck tan. The details such as the rubber road wheels were painted. It might have been easier to do this when these were off the vehicle, but uh, that's not the way I did it. There is one small problem here, which is that we have the uh, gun barrel cleaning kit on the side of this tank, even though this tank doesn't have a turret anymore. The exhaust was also given a grey steel colour base coat, which will act as a nice base for the rusting effects I'm going to add. And I decided to add the decals to the side skirts rather than the side of the vehicle itself. And I did this using some crosses which were from the uh, spare decals bag. I've got plenty in there and they were better quality than the Academy decals. To paint the exhaust I sponged on some of the base dark yellow colour. This was to give the impression of an original coat of painting which had flaked off due to the heat. 
And then I took these three wrist deposit colors, light, medium, and dark from AK Interactive. I started with a fairly heavy coat of the lightest and then applied some of the medium. And once that was done, a small amount of the dark. The next step was an oil pin wash, and I did this with some Ab Tai Lung oil paints. This is the dark brown colour. It's thinned with enamel paints, and you can see it flows really nicely there around the details. The wheels on this kit are a bit basic, but again that pin wash does at least highlight some of the detail there. And for the wooden panel I applied the same pin wash mixture, but I slapped it all over the surface, really quite thickly. Not minding if I had different coverage, not minding if I had darker patches and uh, lighter patches. In fact, I preferred it that way. It gives a more natural look. And I'll be honest, I tried the same thing on the vehicle as well. I tried to really lather that wash on there and I didn't like it. So I removed it with some enamel thinners and some uh, cotton buds. But you know, you never know till you try, and you may as well try on a cheap kit like this. To get a wood grain effect, I added some oil paint to the surface of the wooden panel. And then blended them in with a small amount of thinners, so that some streaks were left behind to look like wood grain. I used some oil rendering techniques to dirty up some of the uh, recesses on the vehicle. So here I applied some oil paint without thinning and then blended it in with a dry brush or a very, very lightly dampened brush. I did that with some brown paint in the recesses and then on some of the higher areas to represent fading I used some lighter paints like buff. The tracks on this kit were quite tricky because they are rubber band tracks and they had become a little bit twisted as well in their uh, years inside the box. But nevertheless I thought I'd have a go at them. So I painted them in a dark grey colour and I used my light rust deposits colour unthinned inside the recesses, front and back, top and bottom. I also speckled on some of that light rust mix. And once that was done I added a smaller amount of the medium rust colour, also using this speckling technique. Once the rust effects were dry I used a pencil to highlight the areas where the road wheels would be in contact and therefore I've cleaned the tracks. and I applied a dry brush of silver over the cleats. As you can see the side skirts block most of the side of the vehicle from view, so the weathering will be limited to the front and the rear of the sides. I started with this dry mud splatter effect from AK, The dry mud had a nice texture but it didn't really give me what I wanted, 
So instead I switch to some AK Damp Earth. And I put that on slightly thinned with enamel thinners and blended it over the top. And a small amount on the side skirts as well. Plus of course some speckling effects. Here the speckles are a bit too big, the brush is too heavily laden here, and probably also the enamel is a bit too thin. So the damp earth looked a little bit better than the dry earth, but it was still too uniform so I used some of this wet ground uh, terrain effect, also from AK, to add a bit of variety. And that's an acrylic paste so it can be thinned on blended with water. And although it looks like a very different colour to the original effect, once it dries I think they blend in quite nicely. And finally a small amount of stowage on the back and we're good to go. And there we go guys, that was my Academy Panzer IV converted into an ammunition carrier. I really enjoyed this and I think building a cheap kit like this enabled me to be a bit more creative, have a little bit more of an experiment and not worry too much about destroying something which had already left a big hole in my wallet. So I think I might try something similar in the future, trying to find an older kit that maybe is not quite so good and then maybe doing some conversions or something slightly different with it. Um, I've got a few ideas in mind actually, but I won't say anything just yet. However, what I will say before I go is thank you very much to everyone for watching, and a special thanks to my Patreon supporters. The support of these guys really helps with keeping the channel going, so thank you very much guys, it really is greatly appreciated. Okay, so until next time, thank you everyone again, and perhaps you will enjoy one of these videos.